Hello, Professor Bright here. Welcome back to the Sunless Sea. Last episode we explored Eigel and ate some memories. Well, I say ate some memories. We more or less just injected them into ourselves by, you know, sticking a needle in us. It wasn't drugs. I mean a literal needle from Eigel. So that was fun. Today we're planning a more sane trip or less sane trip, depends on your perspective. No, 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 just distract yourselves. You're fine, you're fine. I was able to get some supplies and some fuel. But, of course, some people are still upset for some reason. Can't imagine why. It might have to do with the fact that I had them eat each other. But, you know, that's just to be expected. Oh, we're just going to surface rather than... Although, I might be able to just move over this stuff. Can't remember. It's been a while. No, we're going to go to the Fathom King's Hold, just to get a report report real quick. Pigmoat Isle, and then we're going to look for the Mangrove College. Hmm? Ignore them. They will be fine, probably. Hello. You do have rather a lot of health, but... Hmm. Well, leave it be for now. Lorcan's Port, named for that most enterprising of drownies. Phosphor cells burn green. Somewhere below, the king waits. Oh. Interesting. So, live specimens, and I can completely repair my ship. Interesting. And not now, though. Compiler Porter Port. The porter watches you right. She says nothing. And then we left. Goodbye. Now, onward to Pigmoat Isle. To elsewhere. And maybe keep the lights out just in case. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure if this is noticeable to everybody else, but it does seem a lot... It seems a lot faster to me, anyway. And it's more efficient with the fuel. I'm, of course, referring to the Fulgant Impeller, sorry. You know. One does get thoughts in the head and doesn't explain them, and it's simply unacceptable, societally speaking. Go to Pigmoat. Up, up, up. Come on. We have to consult the rats. As one does. Hell, Murania, indeed. Oh. Oh, used up my something awaits you already. Well, compile our port report and then leave, I suppose. No reason to stick around. Hmm. Yes. Send the bat out. I want to at least explore this little space over here, because I'm positive, almost positive, that they're- Oh, hello, 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 you look promising. The ruins of something. You want me to believe that this is nothing? Can't be serious. Hmm. I'll damage the hull a little bit more, but no, this has to be something. It didn't, like, no message came up, but, but it's clearly a temple. An Aztec-looking temple, mind you, but still a temple. But, but, nothing underneath, but. How is this nothing? It's like not even a mark on the map. Oh, that's irritating. It also looks like this is not where the Mangrove College is. Did I discover it earlier or something? I just... I mean, there's only two more places for it to be. Somewhere in here and then somewhere in here. I guess that must be where it is. Like... In one of those two areas, not here. Weird. Hi, I'm going to be just destroying your ship because you're in the way. Well, not really. I'm just, you know, you're here. I'm here. And I think I could take out your ship. So that's what we're doing. Loot and scuttle it. Thank you. 
stout crate. Crate's source of supplies. Useful. We will say useful anyway. Ah, oh, dearie, dear me. Um, ooh. I suppose we could go to Rosegate. I guess. That is an option. Oh. Well, not gonna worry about that right now. No need to worry about that. We're just gonna go and get a port report, probably, because I don't think there's anything else I can do here. I've also completely forgotten what I was supposed to get for them. Ooh, hello. Oh. Hooray? Yes, the witherweed's bad. I get it, I get it, I get it. But yes, extra supplies from that. Whatever that was about. Hmm. Could sample... Take a pamphlet, though. The creation of a cigar. Yes. Ambiguous eoliths, romantic literature, and an unread log. This one's going to be the most difficult, I think. Although, no, because you can occasionally get those at Codex, if I'm remembering right. Hmm. Well, at this point... Eh, we got some time, right? Yeah. Let's go to Visage. I don't think I've had a proper trip there in a while. In fact, I'm not sure that I've had a proper trip there this entire playthrough. Hmm. Unacceptable. Must go. We must see flourishing of years. Need to go inside. And come on. Just a little bit faster. A little bit faster would be nice. Thank you. Create our port report first, of course. And now we go ashore, inward and upward. All those who enter must play their parts. The sign is visible only after you've crossed the threshold. On the lower slopes, stone buildings, flat roofs, archways. In the architecture, there lingers a memory of lotus and palm frond. The hill above is a face, forever looking up at the ceilings of the Untersee. No one inhabits its cheeks or the hollows of its eyes. Chicken at the customs house. One may not wander visage at will. A changing room. All visitors must pass one by one through a room guarded by a person in the mask of a moon moth. Hmm. Masks in an assortment of shapes and colors await. You know, I have never been the bat. Perhaps. Ask to go without any mask. Your own fair face will do for you, thank you very much. No. The moon moth unfolds and folds its wings. Not suitable, it says. On visage, everyone is masked. To walk on the island with your own face would give scandal. Ask the significance of the masks. Maybe there's more to it than a question of aesthetic taste. Assorted pestilences. Moon Moth explains each mask declares a different intention towards the denizens of Visage, and must be accompanied by suitable behavior. The frog is for visitors who, though perhaps clumsy and unfamiliar with local etiquette, have come in order to observe local ways or to make uncouth comments about them. The locust is for those who seek profit in Visage, and would carry away as many goods as possible. You prompt about the bat. Moon Moth hesitates. Bat is an ill-omened visitor, sent as a messenger or a spy. Bat always dies. Well, let's choose the bat mask. It looks threatening. Messenger with no message. A moon moth spreads and folds its wings. Are those part of the moth costume? Looks that way, but one cannot rule out the possibility that moth has real wings. My condolences, it says with polite formality, as it sets the bat mask on your face and ties the worn leather straps around the back of your head. The inside of the mask smells of musk. Yes, let's visit the Flood Court. The Moon Moth speaks as though you should already know what it is. The Flood Court is a long stone room with two ranks of columns on each side. Currently, the court is ankle deep in water. The water stains on the stone show that the flood has often reached higher, sometimes up to the height of your waist. In a raised niche at the far end of the room sits a statue of a man with the head of a ram. He holds a jar from which water flows out into the floor. Yet more evidence that this is Egyptian culture here. Man with the head of a ram... 
That's kind of a description for most of their gods, just man with a head of blank, or woman with a head of blank. Anyway. Hmm. Ask about the purpose of this room. It doesn't really look as though it's good for anything. Depth per day. From a corner, Moonmoth picks up a graduated stick. He shows you how a person standing at the end of the room may dip the stick into the water and use it to measure the water leveled at a preselected point, and how the measurements are compared with measurements written on a calendar. If the water level does not match the calendrical product, sorry, the calendrical position, an assembly of pipes and drains is used to adjust it. It used to be, says the moth, that the water rose and fell of its own accord, and the people before wrote down what height it reached. Now the water is still, but thanks to their actions we can replicate the rise and fall, so as still to be pleasing to the god of the flood. He completes this explanation with a half-body bow towards the statue of the Ram deity. Well, I suppose I could actually find out what his actual name is, couldn't I? Well, not now. Say how much you like the pool, the way the surface of the water is so still, even a few inches from where it's being poured in. Impressive. Strange. Infiltrator. The moon moth looks at you without surprise. Of course, without surprise, no such expression can register on a mask without the small gestures of agitation that accompany a mistake on your part. It expects you to ask questions, then it expects you to be punished for asking. This is what happens to bats. You end up scarred and maskless, back of the dock. Huh. Well, screw you guys too. Guess I'm gone. Bye. Huh. So yeah, being bat kind of sucks, turns out. We're near the Iron Republic, let's go that away. Just because our fuel situation could be made better, couldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Would be nice also if I could actually speak with the devil there and resolve the issue of our snow child. Although I don't think I have enough skin to like, I believe it was three? Three, if my memory serves correctly. And I only have two, which is sad, but oh well, we'll deal with it. Would have been nice if we could have gotten more at Port Cecil, but... Oh well. Doesn't matter, it's fine, probably, even if they do end up melting. Well. It was three, I was right. Hmm. I suppose we could do this as well. It's less resource intensive than some other projects. Twelve Devil Bone Dice, and seven Stygian Ivory. Okay. Something to keep in mind for the distant future. I think 30 should do us. Could argue for more, but not just yet. Plan is Rack, then the Salt Lions. Because that is what I've decided. Hmm. Although perhaps not. Well, not going to worry about it right now. The reason we're going to Rack is because we did kind of send a bunch of people to their deaths, and, well, maybe it's profitable to have done so. Perhaps. Perhaps. Perhaps not. But also, perhaps. Come on, guys, just a little bit further. Go, go, go. And just look at this place go. Hmm. You know, it would be nice to get some objective measurements of... Well, doesn't matter. Still obsessing over whether or not the Fulgan Impeller is really worth all the effort? I think it is. But I can see the argument that it isn't. Hmm. Also, I should be doing all this underwater, let's be honest. Seeing as that is the more unexplored area of the two... I say area. More like lair, really. Anyway. Docking rack. Yes, ships lured by false promises and lights litter the Z-floor. Their broken hulls make a city for the rackers. The citizens are in constant motion, working to survive and appease their fair king, who sits deep within the city on his wheeled throne. Yes, we're aware of these things. Compile our port report. Yes, thank you. And the state of this city. The records look sallow. Hmm. Interesting choices could be made, but no. 
No, no, no. Uh, and come, on. there we go. Hmm. We can go wrecking again. So, am I allowed to taste the tether yet? No. I could have sworn I sent people over here to die. Ah, good, good, good. Here we are. Have any of the ships you sent to come in? You think you recognize a few of the new wrecks as you entered the city. Also, I don't remember seeing your face. Kinda cute. Yes, your ships came, promised them riches, promised them knowledge, promised them pretty toys, and it's all the same. They come and our stores replenish. The tether has new hulls to grow on. Take this gift of scrap to the priestess. Look for me in the other times. Oh? Won't approach the mirror just yet. Apart from the fair king. And taste the tether. Within the sanctum, where no water drips, are walls, doors, and a pedestal of trinkets. It's watched over by a stony matron. Hmm. Don the bone. There's a ring of browned bone. Put it on. The matron leads you to one of the many doors. You follow her into the darkness beyond. Huh. It almost fits us. Like a fiancé's best guess. Intriguing. The matron lights a gas lamp. The room is modest with a well-kept bed in the center. Rest, allow your mind to wander. When you're ready, I will give you the tether. You look away, allowing your attention to settle on a green cup. A warm green, as the neath isn't keen to provide. Tether melts in your mouth. The morning sun streams through the barn's warm-eating wood. The old plow rests in a corner. You'll be pulling it through the fields again today. But for now, you lay in a mound of hay. The vibrant lady is by your side, dozing. You languidly examine your flesh. Parts of you have been stained green from rolling so roughly in the grass. You look over your lover's body. You can't help but smile. She's not really dozing, is she? You hold a hand over her heart. She grins. You both laugh. You can't help yourselves. There was a romance. Interesting. Taste the tether again. Don the bone. Hmm. White walls, they're almost glowing in the light. There's the vibrant lady of the house. Her red hair stands out prettily against the white halls. Her face, freckled like the night sky. Her cheeks flush as you carry the pails of milk into the kitchen. She coughs two times as you pass. She'll sneak out at the second bell tonight. She bites her lip. That bite, do you recognize it? It's familiar somehow. Have you seen something of the vibrant lady in the fair king? His mother or him? Hmm. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Visit the royal hull. Recall a vision of bone. The, vib the vibrant lady bit her lip, just as the king does. Didn't she? Didn't he? The fair king slowly bites his lip. Like that, he wheels closer to you and touches your wrist. He smiles enigmatically. Here we are again. The king kisses your hand and squeezes it gently. Oh. What do have you shared? Apart from the fair king for now. Interesting. This raises a bunch of questions. Quite a few, actually. We're going to make the trip to the salt lions and then ponder a bit. So... The fair king. One, is he human? Two... Is he... Well, I mean, clearly, the Fair King identifies as male, so... Male, for our purposes. But was he her? Or is he related to that vibrant lady of the house? Also, they were clearly having an affair with what I have to assume is a servant. Huh. Well, that got a lot interesting all of a sudden. I kind of wrote Rack off as just a boring little port. But... Huh. Let's visit with the Unmakers, get our little benefits, and then... Yes, how's our hold? It's got enough space for one batch. Hmm. Interesting. 
I suppose we could make the quick trip back to fallen London. Might as well, we've got the time. And just... Hmm. Let's puzzle over the Fair King for a bit, because he seemed to know us from the future, from the tether. But how, though? That doesn't... That's what's just not making any sense to me. Also, you look like you are part of a storyline. Let's find out if that is the case. Hi. Oh. Cute, but no. I have the superior weapons and ship. Investigate the wreckage. Hmm. Crippled, broken, already feeding the Z's endless hunger. Little remains of the ship, but scraps of sinking cargo and a few buoyant parts of its splintered carcass. Investigate the wreckage. You'll have to be quick to salvage anything. You steer close, shining the lamp on the debris. Captain, quick, over there, port side. The legendary clay woman Corsair. She clings tight to the last few scraps of floating debris. Defeated, but defiant. Hmm. Rescue the pirate poet. Throw her a rope. Claim a bounty. Could do. The Price of Freedom. It takes three crewmen to pull the pirate poet from the Z's clutches, while others mutter about bringing an unfinished man, an unfinished woman, aboard ship, she just smirks. She carries little on her but the verses of poetry tattooed over every visible inch, and an old sword almost as chipped as she is. Fortunately, her salvage possessions also include the jangling money purse on her belt, fat and ready to pay the traditional freedom price of her current bounty. As much as the crew could subdue her, all are relieved when she is aboard a lifeboat rowing away through the darkness Towards Guider's Morn. Hmm. Interesting. Wonder if I get to see her again. And if I do, I absolutely must destroy her ship. Because, my god, 400 Echoes is worth... Worth what we actually put in to kill her. Well, to not kill her. I should say. Hmm. Let's dock here. Mine Island. Approach the dock. It's probably... It's probably nothing. Is there something in the air today? A restless breeze? The ship slides into dock. Has something changed on Mutton Island? Fires on the hillside. Last minute preparations, Mutton Island bustles. Villagers scurry on callous errands and the smell of baking fish wafts from ovens. Locals touch up the whitewash on their cottages. Bunting crowns the village. Down on the shore are band practices and beyond among the rocky shoals around the island, drownies begin to congregate. Ask about... Sorry, much too busy. A royal visit. You look for someone else. In the way, you manage to get a few moments' attention from the custodial chief. Sorry, custodial chef. It's the Fruits of the Z's festival, he tells you. The 30th. 30 were promised, 30 delivered. Now his complexity comes to visit our fair island. He turns to a hurrying fisherman, who struggles under a mound of bunting. Is that all there is? More bunting, he screeches. More bunting. You'll get nothing from Mutton Island at the moment. Quaker's Haven is quiet. Is the festival over? Where is the chimney smoke? Where are the people? Mon Island rests silently under the false stars. No smoke rises from the chimneys. No feet tread the streets. No ruddy-cheeked locals trade rustic aphorisms on the jetty. What's happened? Seems to me they made a deal with the drowny king, and he collected. Explore the shore. What's that on the beach? Shoes layer the length of the shore and bob in the sighing surf. Sunday best boots. Solid farmer's shoes studded with hobnails. Small, neat children's shoes with gleaming buckles. Wherever the inhabitants went, they went barefoot. Investigate the cock and magpie. It was the heart of the village once. Much of the brasses still hang on the beams, but now they are joined by an incongruous studding of barnacles. Behind the bar, the floor is littered with empty bottles. You test the beer kegs, also empty. The cellar is flooded with three feet of sea water. Drowned rats float slowly from the surface. Across the surface, rather. Investigate the hill. A hunched shape looms on the hilltop. The effigy. The hill is strewn with dead fish. Silvery scales shine under your lamp. Glassy eyes glint. You come across the old stone well and peer in. The water is high. A salt reek rises from it. On the hilltop, a wicker figure stands. When it was built, it must have been ten feet high. Now it's slumped and sagging. The paper mache of its skin has sloughed away. 
but it still wears a knobby crown of coral. An effigy of the Drowny King. Investigate the hill. Oh, no, no, no. Investigated the hill already. Explore the village. You wander through the empty winding streets. Zeeweed hangs from the windowsills. Thatches are sodden. Drenched bunting hangs limply from the eaves. No one's home. You check house after house, but don't find a soul. The carpets squelch underfoot, oozing Z water. The curtains drip. No valuables have been left behind. No jewelry. No heirlooms. But there's still cutlery in the drawers. Plates and bowls stacked in the damp, stinking cupboards. Something rattles in a coal scuttle. You tip it over and a crab crawls out. <laughs> and a crab crawls out. It peers around, clearly lost. First of all, compile a report report, brief though it may be. Still here, still sodden, empty as a politician's promises. Entertain your crew's terrified speculations. Each of them has a theory about what happened on the island. A sprightly deckhand blames Storm. He's always gusting and blustering around here. The islanders must have angered him. A craggy crewman shakes his head. No, we're that well of theirs. There was something waiting in the bottom of it, and it finally climbed out. Pfft. Or pish. Scoffs a solemn stoker. Mark my words, this is the work of the Fathom King, and his complexity only takes what's offered. Yes, I'm quite certain that the... Yeah, the Drowny King came. His complexity, as they say. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So, Quaker's Haven is no longer the safe port that it used to be. Huh. I was not aware that this could happen. I mean, I think I was aware that something could happen on Mutton Island, because there was that, you know, time quality that happened. But still. Hmm. So my sus- Yeah, my suspicion is that the people of Mutton Island were supposed to drown before, when London initially fell. But they made a deal with the Drowny King to not drown. At least for, you know, a good 30 years. 30 festivals, as they called it. Huh. Interesting, interesting, interesting. A somewhat unfortunate, of course, but... Well. Unfortunate things do happen occasionally. It is I, yes, and it is my purpose to take advantage of such things. Uh, what are your desires again? I can never be bothered to pay attention. Oh, you wanted another two Stygian Ivory. Well, well, that wasn't going to happen today. And still, we have port reports to turn in and some new things to get. Uh, where are we going to? Mount Palmerston. Perfect. I had one to meet with the devil S soon. And this gives me one more reason to do so. There we are. Eh, perhaps I shouldn't have bought as much fuel as I did. I'm certainly not going to get... Well. 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 We'll figure out the way to maximize our value for these port reports. We do have so many of them, though. Well. We'll figure something out. But for now, thank you for your time. Note the like, comment, and subscribe buttons below. Use them responsibly. And I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.